Welcome to What's Up Now. I'm your host, Scott Stewart, and on the show today, Jennifer Lopez, Zendaya, Marie Osmond, Mario Bryant, Mason McNulty, Ms. America, Athena Fleming, Vicki Barbalak in our comedy spotlight with Julie Kidd. But first, let's head on out to Hollywood for the luxury gala Oscar red carpet event. We are here in Hollywood on the red carpet for Oscar night. Some year, I'm going to see you at the Academy Awards, really, and you're going to be accepting that Your award. Lips to God's yeah. ears, or even an Emmy. You know, I take the. We'll, we'll take the you Emmy. Know, I'll take the Emmy. We're not picky. You know, we're not picky. And I have learned when all you give is all you get, so you give it all you've got. It's always good to be bad, and you know, there's there's nothing boring about playing evil. Did your mom give you a lot of advice? Um, uh, yes. Yes, she does. I don't know if I follow it, but yeah. yeah. I, was say, I was just gonna go back to your mom and say, now, nah, does she follow your advice, Kim? Remember, I'm the mom. <laughs> so, no. So, ever since I was little, I've seen and sensed ghosts, and I thought they were live people until they would do something they can't do, like walk through a door. So, I thought I was crazy when I was growing up for a long time. Tell us about the podcast. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. It's called Living Ageless and Bold, and it is for success for women over 55. Oh, so you can't participate then. <laughs> Wait, you got 20 years to wait? Well, that? That's why I'm leading it. So. This is Doug Vermeeren, and I just want to give a quick shout out to What's Up Now, and if you're not watching it, you better. I just wrapped a movie called How to Be a Hitman 101, and that's going to be coming out later this, probably, well, by the time they're done with it, probably end of summer, early early fall. We're going to do a big, splashy Broadway opener, a tribute to an Oscar-winning film from way back in the day, Funny Girl. Oh, my goodness. Now, uh, have you warmed up, Cindy? Z, 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 z. Tell me if you need salvation. Tell me if you need completion. Hi, I'm Charlene Tilton. What's up now? <laughs> the night is young, but I'm not. <laughs> what makes you smile? My grandkids. Yeah. They're, they're two and six years old. Two years old and six years old. And they you're laugh and incredible. Smile. You're looking beautiful. And I can't wait to see your new projects. Charlene Tilton. Hi. Mr. Purple? Yeah, we're here. We're here to rock the house. Do you remember your first break? What, what, what we did? My first big break was a soap opera called As, uh, As the World Turns in New York. Everybody wants to come to your events. Oh, thank you so much for being a part of it. And I welcome and everybody who wants to come for next year, get involved like tomorrow. I am in Saving Anna and it was nominated for the Oscars. Um, the song, Missing Children, it's about human trafficking. I'm here promoting my movie, Sisters in the Shrink, on Amazon Prime, starring Trina Braxton and Tawana Braxton. Oh, really? Yes, and I play the LGBTQ comic relief, and I'll just give you one little hint. I'm in love with the shrink. I just wrapped a movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger's son last week, oh. and we have a new movie coming up that I'm producing. It's called Key to the West, and it's a cowboy musical based in the 1800s. If you don't remember, Marissa Kinson, fashion designer extraordinaire, you were the one, she was the one that started with the fashion shows for the Real Housewives of Orange County. Yeah, incredible, and what have you been up to? Well, I'm just amazed about how everything has evolved because when we first started that first season, we had no idea that it would turn into this. So, you know, a really big bravo shout out to the OGs here because at the time, we didn't know where it was going to go and basically they put their lives in front of everybody and now we know it's fame and fortune, right? But back then, these girls put it all out there. Sure we learned really fast what looks good on TV and what doesn't. Oh my yeah. God. We had too many sky tops. We were sharing all our sky tops back then, remember? Yep. So, but I think that's what makes both of you so honest. Rather than some of the ones that come on the show, it's like, you know, are they really giving us the truth? Not, you are given the truth. They're not, they're, we're totally giving the truth. We're the ones that worked. We're the ones that created the franchise across the world. And it's been a fun journey. It's really been fun. And Marissa, are you still designing clothes? I mean, you've got a lot of things, I think, uh, always going for it. Yes, I am. And we've moved into technology. So more to come. And have you been in the business a long time? I've been in the business since I was five years old. My first break was uh, fifth grade Hansel and Gretel. I played uh, Gretel's dog. What makes you smile? 
my dog, my friends, my family, everybody that I love. Second book will be out this summer. We want to know what's going on since we got out, got out alive, but you know, we're going to do it up. HGTV man. What we're working on currently is our Lady in Red Gala, which happens every year. This is our 12th annual at the Beverly Hilton Hotel. I'm working with um, Give a Kid a Coat, which is a... Um, DivacateAcoat.org. Whatever we can do to make these events really amazing. So we're just really happy to be here. It's been a busy year. So uh, grateful. Uh, we've had some great uh, clients on and uh, talent on my talk show on here with Cash. This is the OG from reality, and I'm not kidding. I don't think any of it would happen without you, Vicky. And I love you, and I'm so happy you stopped on the carpet. Thank you so much. Uh, my friend Marissa Kenson got us on here and here for the Oscars. I'm super excited. Now you are looking better and better. I mean, you were on my. What's up, Orange County, 10, 12 years ago, and you have not aged a drop. A long time ago, honey. That was probably like 15 years ago. Oh, but Coto Insurance, we were talking about Coto Insurance. It still could, right? About, we still have to talk about Coto Insurance. I still work. Yeah, no. we, we got to work, don't we? So I have to say, I heard a little buzz, but I don't know if you can talk about it. Are you back on another Ultimate Girls trip? I just got done filming in Morocco, season four, Ultimate Girls trip. Oh, my goodness. got to watch it. It's going to be a great show. I loved you on the one, but I know you were a trooper to do that one. I know. And so I know that what people want to see you having fun again. I had fun. I whooped it up. I love that when you're on these shows, you you tell it like it is, no matter what happens. I mean, you could try to play it a little different ways and be kiss, kiss, kiss. And no, that don't work for me. My tears are real. My heart is real. I cry when I cry, and I whoop it up when I want to whoop it up, you know? Yeah. This is Renee Lawless, and I'm on What's Up Now, my favorite. Tune in. I am Mario Bright, and I'm on What's Up Now. My next guest is a triple threat entertainer. He is turning heads in the music industry. <laughs> Mario Bryant, Woo! how are you, Mario? I am phenomenal. <laughs> Good. Before we get to What's Up Now, I gotta know how did it get? How did you get started singing? How old were you? In? I got my start in singing. Um, I was four years old singing in a church. Um, gospel music is like the best, you know. Um, my family is musically uh, inclined, and so I got a lot of things by watching my dad and aunts and uncles, and um, and I have progressed from there, you know. Uh, high school, performing in high school, performing arts, and then moving on to college and, and uh, studying opera and classical music, and I got my start there. Any music and influences when you were growing up that you loved? Heck yeah. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Um, uh Gospel, uh, Twinkie Clark, the Clark sisters, they're like, if those who don't know them, they're very popular, but those who know them, they're like, uh, if, if Stevie Wonder and Aretha Franklin had a child, or children, okay, yeah, that'd be them. That'd be them. You know? <laughs> any, any memory of one of your favorite songs? From Stevie Wonder? Or, or, we'll go Stevie, nothing's wrong with Stevie, right? We always love Stevie. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, uh, Isn't She Lovely is, okay, is one. Are you ready? <laughs> Isn't she lovely, come on now, hey. Isn't she wonderful? I couldn't ask for any more. That's amazing, amazing. What, is, what would you say is one of your most memorable performances so far? You know what? Um, I will have to say, when I was on TV, that, that, uh, re recently on the show, I Could See Your Voice. And David Foster, those two. Yeah, so yeah. he's answering my question. I had an next one for you. I was going to say, I can see your voice. Those judges were shocked when you when you started singing. They Let me tell were. You. They were. And, and some people think this like stage or whatever, but it was a real deal. Yeah. It was a real. They really didn't know that the show was top secret. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Ken Jeong said after he performed, you're, going to, you're looking at a star. And I think he is right. Yeah, that, that felt really good. And then Nicole Scherzinger, mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, uh, she said that um, uh, that's a person I can hang out with. And, and she, she said, I love you. And, and it was, it was a, we had a good time on the show. It was yeah. great. And you mentioned yeah. David Foster. Yeah. Well, how how'd you work with David Foster? Well, um, I was at home getting ready to uh, get dressed for work. And I saw him come on a TV show and said, I have a contest. You know, send your video. So I did, and so out of thousands of people, he picked me, and that 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 speaks of volumes. So um, it was very nerve-wracking because to be ripped out of a normal life and then you know 
whisked into Hollywood and all these stars and Dr. Phil came up to me afterwards and said, I was really, really impressed, you know. But the whole experience was amazing as an eye opener and I, I soon um, take myself serious and progress yeah. on. You're, yeah. you're, the future is bright for you. Oh, yeah. Can you describe like <laughs> your style of music or if you recorded an album, what it would maybe sound like? Well, you know what? I, I sing, I'm a multi-genre guy, but, but the most uh, genre that I really connect with is pop rock. And that's pop is pop and opera together. <laughs> He's Mr. Pop Rock, right? Do <laughs> you have any hidden talents? I know you you sing, you play the piano, mm -hmm. but any anything we know here? You know, that? I'm I'm a good cook. He cooks too. Yeah, I'm a, good, I'm a good cook. Yeah, I, I um my mom is a good cook, and my sister and I stayed in the kitchen watching them, and and boom, boom, bang, you know, I I can cook comfort food. Okay, yeah. comfort food. Like that, you can't eat all the time. <laughs> now we know the music business is not easy. Not easy. Any advice anyone's given you that you think you know? You know what? Share? You know, first uh, practice, 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 practice. Um, be ready when it's time. We have the opportunity to be ready, and then also um, don't stop because there, there's points in my life where I thought I was going to quit, and then. Things happen afterwards, and I'm like, I would have missed that if I would have stopped. Oh, he yeah. has performed a lot of national anthems. <laughs> you said the L.A. Lakers. Anybody else? Oh you? gosh, uh, L.A. Lakers. I uh, did Dodgers Stadium, um, uh, Angels, NASCAR, uh, Anaheim Ducks, and a ton of corporate events. <laughs> Anybody you'd like to do a duet with? Yes, Andrea Puccelli. Oh, there you go. We're gonna got, <laughs> let's try to make that happen. Yes, please. <laughs> Mr. Puccelli, be calling Mario. Before we go, please, sure. can you sing us a few lines? All right. <laughs> Tevoyabe Nasai Amazing. <laughs> Woo! I got my money's worth. That is the one and only Mario Bryant. I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna buy his album. I'm gonna see him in concert. <laughs> Big things coming for our my friend. Thank you so much for being here on What's Up Now. All right. Mario oh. Bryant. Woo. I know you are ready to laugh, so that's why we brought in comedian Julie Kidd. It's time for What's Up Now Comedy Spotlight. I'm Julie Kidd, host and producer of The Funniest Housewives, and right now we are bringing to the stage our trailer trash housewife, Vicki Barbalak. Woo! So we're up at the Rava Winery, beautiful. And we do a show, and the next morning, I'm so jealous, and um, so the next morning we're still drinking some champagne and stuff, and this driver's taking us home, and we're driving through San Luis Obispo, and I like look up and I see California men's colony. Yeah, yes, and I'm thinking, man, that is the biggest gay man's resort I have ever seen in my life. It goes on forever. And then I sober enough to realize it's a prison. It's a prison with a really stupid fufu neg, the California men's colony, right? I said to my girlfriend, you guys want to go in for a kanji? And, uh... We'd like to have a conjugal visit. And he goes, well, who do you know? And we're like, nobody. And he goes, well, that's going to be a problem. And I'm not political or anything. I think it's the one reason we need a woman president, okay? I, I don't care which party she comes from. I think the first executive order a woman president would do is she just make it legal. Right? That we just drive up to prison. <laughs> have a conjugal visit. Be on our way. Okay? Right? There could be some kind of catalog with the milk shops. <laughs> and we could just peruse through. For you young people, you love the, the dating apps. You love the dating apps so much. Today, right? So there could be just like a penitentiary app. <laughs> right? Like Pender, you know? <laughs> too many fish, too many felons, you know? I mean, <laughs> swipe right. Oh, this guy's only got 
two months. Let's make that happen, man. Let's go now. There really are so many dating apps. It is so confusing. I thought 23andMe was a dating app. You asked for it, so we're doing it. We are gonna crack open the safe for Jennifer Lopez and friends in our Celebrity Video Vault. We're here at Avalon Hollywood for the Storybook Suite presented by Children's Miracle Network Hospitals. What's up, how are you? Oh, we're doing good now that we saw you, so today is gonna be so much fun for the kids. Absolutely, it's all about the kids. I love, you know, I love this organization. I've been a, kind of a part of it for like about a year and some change now, and I just love, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's such a passion of mine as young people and young minds, and um, so just to be a part of this, just to continue to support and see them get bigger and do more beautiful things um, is really important, so I'm glad to be here. You're like the most multi-talented person I think I ever met. So. I mean, I try to do a little bit of everything, I try. So many fun stuff I'm working on, it's like that would take us three years. <laughs> All these kids are sitting there just so excited to see Zendaya. What's up? At first when I saw you come on the Step and Repeat, you put your hand up like this and I'm all, is she showing a new ring or something? But <laughs> tell us what this is mean. It's the Miracle Band. Actually, you go, you go to MyMiracleBand.org. My Miracle Band, and they will give you a free one, and it's to bring awareness. That's what JLo's doing here today, okay. is to help people know that these hospitals need our support. In our uh, 32 years that we've been doing this, we've raised $5 billion for children. And this was founded with you and was it with John? John Schneider. Yeah. Two years. Keep Bo it a go. Duke. Bo Duke. <laughs> Jennifer, nice to meet you. How are you? Oh, I get to shake her hand. I know you must be tired after last night. So yeah. Yes, yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I was amazed when you said Clark. I didn't know. I thought you were maybe a you Nick know, fan all I, year. I was a Nick fan all year, and I was a Clark fan all year. Oh. Um, and in that moment, you know, he said Nick, so I figured I'd say Clark, and you know, right? Keep it. Right you know, there. we got to we got to keep it even. We're judges. We're yeah. not supposed to like be biased in any way. Right. But at the end of the day, either one of them would have won. I would have been very happy. I think they were both worthy, and I'm really happy that Nick won. I think he's a he's a perfect American Idol. Like I said the night before, he's right. the epitome of why that show was created. Yeah. He has the the chops, the looks, the the commercial kind of quality that American Idol and that America loved, and yeah. which is why they chose him. So bring what brings you here today? I saw that commercial. Um, I just always love the cause, you know, like I said, children and women's causes is what the Lopez Family Foundation is all about, and um, health care is a big, big initiative for us um, with telemedicine, and, and we got that idea from the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles and working with the doctors there, like Dr. Siegel and, and the staff at Children's Hospital, so probably the most unfair thing in the world is to have a sick child and to have to deal with that and to help these parents. and and their kids and make sure that they have the best health care that they can have. Right. They're pulling us away, I just have to say, yes. Vegas. Yes. It's going to be exciting, It's right? going to be super January. exciting. Get yes. tickets Saturday, yes. right? <laughs> we got it. Uh, thanks for stopping. Woo! My favorite. Hey, I'm Attica Schaefer. What's up, Orange County? Okay, he's from one of my favorite shows, The Middle, Atticus Schaefer. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. How about you? Good. I've always wanted I see you on TV. You're so funny. I love that show. Thank you. Thank this you. is a good event today for the kids. Absolutely. You know, I'm a, I'm a firm belief that we were all created to be unique, that we were, you know, we may be faced with a wide variety of different challenges. So to be able to be out here and help these kids, I think it's so cool. You're doing, I, I think I, we heard your voice and what, was it a movie? A yes, Frank and, Tim Burton's Frank and Weenie. How yeah. was that? Oh, such a blast. Being able to work with Tim. He's incredible and very creative. He thinks outside the box, and to be a part of that, that was so cool. Well, we've seen him TNT's Murder in the First, Raphael Sabarge. How are you? I'm good, thank yes, you. Yes, and weren't you also in like Once Upon a Time? That's what they tell me, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> that's what they told me. That's the, that's the thing. You think I got these things memorized? Sorry, Raphael, I know. <laughs> Two seconds before you pull up. Okay, no. You're so right. you excited to be here today. Let's say that. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, obviously, you know, any chance to be able to help kids in general and, and sick kids specifically is an opportunity opportunity for you to feel really good. So um, we're all happy to be here. This charity is incredible. I mean, how could you not do anything Marie Osmond does? She is a fabulous woman who is helping children all over North America. How I met your mother, Vanessa Evigan. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, this is a fun event for kids today. Yes, I'm coming to hang out with the kids. <laughs> yeah. So, what are you? Anything you've been working on that you can tell us out there on TV Land? Yes. Um, I just did a movie called um, The Morning After, which should be coming out. It's in film festivals right now. And then another movie called Only God Can 
which is a faith-based movie. Oh, okay. Contradict each other. Oh, well, it means you can do a lot of different things. Yeah, right? yeah definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was the Silver Surfer, yes. Okay. And you were blue in a few movies too, right? <laughs> well, yes, I was the blue fish guy, Abe Sapien, in the Hellboy movies. That's right, okay. right. Okay. And, and then, I'm also kind of bluish again now on, on the, the TV show Falling Skies on the TNT network. Sunday nights at 10, <laughs> starting June 28th. Uh, I, I play the, the alien Cochise uh, on the show. I'm, I'm, a, I, I'm a good alien who's come to Earth to help the, the humans fight back the bad aliens who have taken over. So we've seen you on uh, Passions, we've seen you on Scrubs. Now there's a new show on Pop TV. Yeah, Queen's a Drama, and it's filled with drama. Hey guys, I'm Jen Wiederstrom from The Biggest Loser. What's up, Orange County? <laughs> Yeah. Biggest loser, and Jen is helping to make him lose the weight, right? Yeah. Woo. Okay, well, have fun today for Thank the you. for the kids. Yep. Great yep. charity. Everything for them. And what I love about it as well is, you know, sometimes it's hard to choose which charity you want to support. But in this way, no matter the disease, no matter the limitation, this this charity helps everyone. Yeah. And I think it's pretty neat. It is. It's important with Marie and I. We are both on different sides of the same coin because uh, with the Children's Miracle Network she's trying to help kids that are already sick which is so important because you know I'm the nanny right and uh, and I'm trying to with my organization Cancer Schmanza help kids not get sick in the first place you know we all have it so good really and when you walk into a children's hospital we get a, a big dose of humility and, and gratitude for all the gifts we have, so it's a good day to give back. This is for the children today. Yeah, yeah, now that I have one, it's even more important for me to be yeah. involved. So uh, how is it working on Scandal? Scandalous. Scandalous. There you go. Once upon a time, Georgina Haig, and she got married recently, right? I did, actually, yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we love your show. How are you? Thank you. No, I'm very well. I'm happy to be here. I just made a little crown and, you know, we're getting, there's mini sliders. Over there, we're so. going to have fun today. I think everyone's pretty happy, yes. yes but well, you are a great actress, and we were so excited to meet you. No, we're going to raise a lot of money for the kids. Yes, always. You know, anything that we can do. That's why every time she calls or this organization calls, I, if I'm available, I'm there. Good. We are glad you're here today, and the kids are going to be happy. I just wish we could get you to sing a little bit for us, but we got to see you on tour, I guess. Maybe. It's a little early, yeah. yeah. I, haven't, I haven't had my Baileys. I haven't had my Baileys and coffee yet. Are you guys warms up a lot? Uh, poor performance, kind of yeah. You do? Performance, I try to, just to make sure that you don't want to break anything, you don't want to strain anything. But, you know, if it was one song, I could probably just make it happen. Wing it, right? I can wing it. He can. He can. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going to wing it, okay? Mr. Brian McKnight, thanks so Thank much. Thank you, man. Nice to meet you. <laughs> What a thrill it was to MC the recent Ms. America pageant. You have got to check out the crowning moment of Athena Fleming. Our first runner-up is Ms. North Texas. That means Ms. West Coast is your new What were you thinking when you heard your name? Well, first I was like, wait, they haven't said my name yet. Like, you know, as they start to count down and when I heard my name, I just so much joy, so much just gratitude poured over me and I just couldn't stop the tears. You work so hard to win. You. And you got a lot of work ahead of you. Yes, so you. yes, what is your platform? So my platform is Positively Social. It stems from us coming out of this pandemic. It's educating everyone how we're gonna reconnect through volunteer service, getting out in the community let's get rid of that social distancing let's come back together and let's start right now you're gonna represent America America all of America and it's such an honor again I'm a proud veteran I've worn United States across my heart and I'm just so so proud to wear Ms. America now too Ms. America Actor Mason McNulty has a new movie coming out. I caught up with Mason to talk about it. Mason McNulty, how are you? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Good. So he just got done filming. So tell us about the new movie you're working on. Well, I just got done filming a movie called Gacy Terran Suburbia. And what it is, it's a, it's a fictional story of the crimes that happened with John Wayne Gacy back in the 1970s. 
So everything that he's done in the movie is fictional, but his character himself is not. And it's what it is, it's basically, it's like the POV through a teenager's eyes of what would happen if the devil moved in next door. So it's actually really, it was really fun to film and there's a lot of, a lot of scenes that really get me, it, it, it's a good movie. Celebrities were out to support Fight for the Amazon. Take a look. You know, I'm really just a caretaker of this planet for my kids, and I need to pay it forward. There's got to be something left to pay it forward. The global impact of this is, is probably more far-reaching than we can imagine. Uh, Obviously the deforestation of the Amazon right now, the displacement of indigenous people, of, of the wildlife that, that may never come back. We have so many influential people here that are so passionate about the Amazon and that's so great. I mean, obviously you go to these events, but to really hear them speak and see the passion behind it is really powerful and really cool. But we're honored to be ambassadors for PUBG Mobile's campaign, Fight for the Amazon. Um, most importantly because they raise funds for Global Green and that organization is very important. Not only do they fund the people that are fighting the fires right now in the Amazon, but they are going to try and help fix the damage that's done by planting all these trees. We became really good friends on the show and Dancing with the Stars, right? And I feel like once we start going out, it kind of like elevated to another level. So I feel like Dancing with the Stars kind of showed our sides, the strongest side, the weakest sides, who we are as people. The global crisis that's happening uh, with our climate is one of the most important causes that people can get involved with right now. We're happy to be able to mobilize our 600 million players around the world to help Global Green in their initiative to fight the fires and help reforest the Amazon. We all know good things come to an end, but be sure to check us out on the internet where you can watch videos, see exclusive photos, and contact us about being on the show. Until next time, I'm your host, Scott Stewart, and that's What's Up Now. What's up now? <laughs> What's up now? My favorite. Tune in. What's up now? What's up now? And if you're not watching it, you better. What's up now? Now! What's up now? 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 What's up now?